Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Habitual Line Crosser, and if you notice, there's a, another individual here with me. This is Sister Line Crosser. Uh, goes by KC, uh, those initials down for uh, the killer of chickens. She is notoriously known at the KFC. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do drugs while in the military. Don't, don't do drugs at all. Don't do- Really cool person. Oh yeah, that's a good <laughs> <laughs> You saw him, you know? Fuck you. <laughs> What we're talking about today is we're snipe hunting. I'm just kidding. We're not. You don't know what snipe hunting yes, is. Yes, I do. You know is it with hunt? the bag and the? Well, there's a lot of different variations for snipe hunting. Uh, the one Dad did to me was, uh, yeah, no, our father did that. You're supposed to have it done by your friends and like people who you know are, are cool with you, not your own father. But anyways, yeah, it was a brown paper bag. It left me in a cornfield at like 10:30 at night and said, "Just scare them my way. You'll snipe, snipe with the bag, and, and I'll be on the other end of the cornfield." Uh, it took me like three hours to get across that cornfield. Turns out he wasn't there on the far side. Uh, yeah, anyways. Sounds like dad. So, so, yep, that's dad. We're talking about snipes. And you know what? I'm sitting next to one. So how about you give us a brief overview of what a snipe is? Really cool person. Uh, no, uh, it's an engineer. Um, that's what engineers in the Navy uh, Navy is called. We, we are the snipes. Um, even the head uh, enlisted engineer, uh, usually a chief, uh, he's known as Top Snipe, so he's the supposed to be overseeing and the best of the best. Uh, engineers are, of course, always in the belly of the ship, and uh, they are known as Snipe and Snipes men. Um, but what research did you find? Okay, so I dug into what a Snipe was and the history of it, and a lot of it is, is word of mouth. And I will tell you that I, at least personally, was an, unable to find out who exactly, like in a picture of John Snipe, if they're all named after John Snipe, that is Snipe's men or John Snipe will go into who he was and how the whole story went down and exactly what happened, right? Uh, so I can't find an actual image of John Snipe. I don't know when he served. Um, the only John Snipe I was able to find is John William Snipe's Jr., who passed away on board the USS Harder, uh, August 24th, 1944. He was a submariner. Well, they don't really pass away. They're just forever on, put, on patrol, right? Or eternally on patrol. That's yes. how submariners do. Uh, it was off the coast of Bataan. They believe they were taken out by a depth charge. But he was also a snipe as well. He was a motor machinist mate first class. And that's a snipe, right? That's an yes. engineer. Okay. Engineer. Engineer. <laughs> hey guys, this video has been brought to you by Gamer Sus. It's a wonderful energy drink alternative with zero sugars, zero carbs that is keto friendly. There is like a hundred servings in this thing. So you pack this bad boy into your bag when you go to the field and around day 10 or 11, when everyone knows that nicotine and caffeine happen to be forms of currency, you are covered as long as you got water. And you always got water. It's just out of a water buffalo that's been left over from World War II. We know how it is. So remember, when you're in the field on day 10 smelling like asses, don't forget Grandpa's ashes. <laughs> it's fucking great, man. Like, I love this shit so much. Use promo code HABIT or click the link in the description of this video to get yourself 10% off your order. And while you're there, go ahead and tack on some of those free samples and if you want to, get yourself some, these are sus snacks, a hundred calories. They're, they're, look, they're delicious. I look, fucking note to self, HLC, do not eat the entire box of promo fucking snacks. God damn. Now I gotta order some more. Get yourself some gamer subs today. Back to the video. What I was able to find is snipes can actually trace their lineage. This is, we're going way back in history. Can actually trace their lineage to the times of sailboats. Yes. Did you know this? So underneath the belly of the ship, the people who would work down there, obviously if you didn't have engines, you didn't have boilers, you didn't have anything like that, you were a sailboat. These were the individuals who were sewing sails together so that you had a means of propulsion and they were also the carpenter and the carpenter's men who were keeping that boat afloat, po plugging all the holes in it like Jack Sparrow. Oh yeah. Yeah, dug all the way back that far, oh, yeah. right? In the early 1800s, around 1812, I believe the U.S. got their first ever steam-powered um, vessel, and it had obviously the big the, the big roller shit on the back of it. What's it called? Do you know what that's called? I don't know if you would I, know. I wouldn't. That's know old that. boat stuff. I no, just wasn't I'm sure not that old. You're older than me. Okay. You fine. were there, right? I was not. You saw him, you know. Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> Well, when they started putting steam engines and coal burning stoves and stuff like that on board of these ships, they were actually pulled right from trains. They didn't have their own proprietary versions. They just pulled them from trains. Believable. So, so what did they do? They started pulling people from railroads who knew how to operate these things and just said, well, go in the belly of the boat and this is what you're going to do. 
So these were the individuals that would carry the coal from the bunkers on board the ship up to the, oh, that's words that I'm not familiar with, that's why I got it written down, Boilermaker, and uh, the machinist would stand watch over the hearth. I think I said that right. That's what keeps everything warm. Is, is that what that yeah, is? Yeah, literally. You still have a hearth now? No. I'm, I, I'm not sure. No. I, you had, like, you're talking about like gas turbines and shit inside well, yeah, that. Because I'm a, I'm a GSM. So there's GSMs and then there's boiler techs. Boiler techs are no really, not really a thing because they're, they're the ones using the steam. And then, of course, there's the nukes, uh, the nuke side of everything. And there's the like machinist mate version of the nukes. And so there's different, it's similar jobs. Different different ways to do it, but mine specifically, me being a GSM, uh, I gas turbines. That's specifically what I work on. So this is the original way how uh, the Navy used to run. So modern day snipes happen to include your hull maintenance technicians, damage controlmen, machinist mates, engine men, electric, electricians mates, gas turbine system technician, which happens to be you. And yes. you just turn wrenches on, on a giant engine. Yes. Okay. Here's how the whole thing went down. This, and this is, of course, if I use the wrong language or I'm not covering it correctly. Um, when, th when these first came around, um, the guys in the belly of the boat were often referred to as like, uh, you know, bilge rats. They had a bunch of other terms for them and they were, they were dirty. They were nasty. They were gross. Now you can dig through history and I found a couple articles about how they used to turn their, uh, what are they, the little white hats called? What's the nickname for those things? The Dixie cup. The Dixie cup. They used to take the Dixie cups and they would dye them blue. Yes. And then they were called black hats for a little while yes. because their Dixie cups were always gross and covered in oil and stuff. Um, I told you I did my homework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done proud some of you. Good yeah. job, good job. So the Navy, what they figured out is that eventually as, as steam-powered ships and engine ships were not going away, what they did is they broke them off into two divisions. You had pretty much topsiders and everybody who was below decks. And everyone who was below decks would refer to their, like would would uh, report to their top person, and then the people above deck would report to their top person. But the Navy did some fuck shit, right? So that and this is something I read. Okay, tell me if I'm right or wrong. Yeah. The Navy did some fuck shit, and the fuck shit that they did is that they because both of those individuals, the bottom bottom end and the top end, were equal, they had to make it so that one of them could be above the other person. They broke them into staff and line officers. Now, only line officers could become captains. Now, yes. line officers were the top siders. Those yes. are the line officers. Now, the crazy part of this is, so the line officer, the person up top, would always end up outranking the people who worked in the belly of the boat. Mm -hmm. That being said, also on the enlisted side of the house, so pretty much everybody top side was outranking everybody who worked in the belly. So a petty officer machinist was junior to a deck seaman third. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm just, I'm reading. I don't know. That's why we throw hands. D fucking fuck it. Right. So <laughs> along comes John Snipe. Now the story goes, again, I don't have an official story of this, but it makes a lot of sense, right? So um, the topsiders were treating the people who worked underneath the belly of the boat pretty shitty. Like they would, they had worse food. They had worse, uh, how, like housing conditions. What do you guys call them? Birthings? Birthings, yeah. yeah birthings. They had worse birthings. They had, the, they had their conditions were shit. We were second class uh, citizens. Yeah, they were basically. just treated poorly, unlike everybody else on board the boat. Yep. So John Snipes came around. He was that staff officer in charge of everybody below decks. Now, him and the line officer, they, they kind of had a beef, right? And the John S Snipes, sorry. Yeah, John Snipe. Snipe or Snipes? Snipe. Snipe. John Snipe, as the story goes, he said, hey, you need to treat my sailors below deck better and you need to do it now. And the guy on the top side was like, or you're gonna do what? And he said, bet. And he called his people and said, shut down the boilers. And <laughs> It's a really fancy way of saying, <laughs> you better start fucking rowing unless you treat my people better. So like that, that's how the whole story goes. I don't know when this happened. I've heard references say that it happened in Vietnam. Doesn't necessarily make sense. I don't think they were still using coal in Vietnam. Um, it does make more sense happening around the American Civil War, which is, I, I believe, as far as I've been able to trace this back. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Is that in the wheelhouse yeah, of exactly? Yeah, it does. Okay, so as of today, snipes are your, as the previous jobs that I listed out, uh, did I miss anything no. that was of any kind of significance? I tried to do like really good homework. You did really good homework, good I, job. I'm I very tried, proud of you. Yeah. Yeah, to... no, that's pretty much everything. We're, you know, they were second class citizens and then eventually there was a mutiny uh, and they decided to rise up because that's the thing, you know, yes, you don't mess with your uh, your CSs. Those are the people with uh, the food, but you don't mess with the people that literally make everything moving. I'm uh, as an engineer, we're there two to three hours before the ship even starts. 
We make the water, we heat everything, we cool everything, we keep everything moving, and we keep everything from exploding or lighting on, you know, lighting on fire, flooding. If it wasn't for us, there wouldn't be a lot of survivability inside the ship. That's kind of like, I, I can I can understand that as an air defender because okay. I don't always do, like I do my job, yes, but a lot of my job is just kind of making sure shit's good. Okay. Like just making sure, but like, God forbid a missile comes flying in because the infantry guys aren't shooting it down. The tankers aren't shooting it down. The artillery isn't shooting it down. Air defenders, we're smoking that shit. Okay. So for you guys, it's like, you're just making sure shit's good. But if it like lights on fire or yeah. explodes, like that state, hey, we got to fucking fix this. Yeah, we got to fix everything. We're the reason we move. We're, we're the reason that we can go somewhere where we can go fast. We can go slow. We cool all of the combat systems. We have to produce enough uh, of the dry air that goes into the systems to keep everything cooled. There's electronic, you know, uh, chill water and everything. And we, we filter the water that goes through the whole ship that you use to shower, that you use to uh, make food, do everything. If you, we literally have to take care of everything underneath. So you guys, so the rest of the top side can actually be survivable and take care of everything outside. Okay, so you make sure the boat is perfect so that way they can maybe shoot shit off the yeah. boat. Maybe. They, everyone has to do their job. That's the whole point of, you know, in the Navy or in the military in general. We have certain people that have to do their jobs. And if one person is lacking in one department, you're going to fail in another. Yeah, that's big facts. That's S simple as that. You have to work together. It's, you know, one team, one fight. Woo! One team, one fight. That's that's the Navy. No, that's the Army. We say that it all, is? all the fucking oh, time. God. One team, one fight. I bet the Marine Corps. Let me know in the comment section if the Marine Corps, the Air Force, or the Space Force all say one team, one fight. And Coast Guard. Sorry, I forgot you guys exist. You have one Medal of Honor. I'll give you that. You have one more than the U.S. Space Force. Wow. Space Force doesn't have a Medal of Honor. Last I checked, the Army has like 2,300 Medals of Honor. Yeah, no, we... we, we Put, there's a lot of Well, business. you've been around longer than everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, you're the oldest, aren't the, you? The United States Army yeah. is, well, technically the National Guard is older than the Army. Okay, okay. But Theirs is like 1600s. Like, they were around like way the fuck long before yeah, we were. Yeah, because isn't it Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, Space Force? And like age? Uh, I don't know when the Coast Guard came around. Oh, I don't. shit. And the Air Force split off from the Army in the 1950s. Yeah, but I thought Navy and Army were the oldest. Yes, Navy. Okay, and Army yeah, was that's what I was like. Yeah, yeah. Army like, came first, Continental Army, and then Navy came. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because we couldn't afford boats in the Revolutionary War. The French had to show up with those. Yeah, we oh. couldn't afford boats. See, you're all we, about history. We couldn't even really afford uniforms, but <laughs> <laughs> same. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that about wraps it up. So as always. Do not commit to the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing. And if you would like to support, please go to habituallinecrosser.com. Go ahead and support the channel. Get yourself some merch. Uh, I am, as I'm recording this, but if it's longer since my recording, I will have the merch store up and running where I'm kind of transitioning between merchandisers right now or, or distributors. So please bear with me there. But uh, is there anything you would like to say? Um, no. Oh, okay. I should have something inspirational, but I, I'm sorry, I don't at this time. Inspiration. Insp inspiration. Don't do drugs. Don't. We all. Never mind. I'm not going to Don't do it. drugs while in the military. Don't. Don't do drugs at all. Don't do. Oh, yeah. That's a thing. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. Drugs are bad, kids. Ugh. I don't know. My bad. <laughs> I don't see the sunlight. It's okay. Uh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> Play me out. <laughs> <laughs>